Hello everyone, it's Mike Levin, March 23rd, I believe it's uh, Wednesday at around 8.20 a.m. And I'm just finishing my walk through the flower district on my uh, short little walk getting off the one at 28th Street and then uh, just going over to uh, Madison Avenue. And uh, it's as different a walk as my 34th Street uh, A train exit at Penn Station to the Empire State Building, as you can imagine. As touristy as that is, uh, this is like industrial, uh, all business, uh, business to business. Uh, lines of wholesalers and uh, a lot of uh, you know, hustle bustle uh, associated with that. And it's probably not quite the same uh, ease with which to make a, a video like this. Uh, mixed in with the tourists on 34th Street, it just blends in and looks natural. Here it's kind of weird, but I'm gonna do it. So, new work experience. Oh my God. So, I guess it's still in that really exciting phase at the beginning, making all the discoveries. But wow, good match of skill sets and things someone brings to the table with organization that is right at the stage to benefit from those skills. I may pipulate for this current endeavor that I just uh, joined. And it's amazing. Uh, yesterday I uh, sat during lunch uh, with a group of people who I saw leaving as a lunch crowd and I sort of intentionally didn't join because I don't like the, uh, the inertia of uh, slow to decide lunch crowds, what do you want to do today, blah, blah. Made that decision some 20 years ago. And uh, so after I decided to go out for lunch for myself, I went to the most convenient local place that offers a little for everyone, decent price, uh, the re cash lot, the register line moved super quickly. And I ran into them there and I started chatting with them there. And I mentioned that fact about my, uh, uh, you know, personal policy regarding lunch crowds. And he laughed at it and he says, yeah, no, we all come here a lot just for that very reason. So I joined the crowd back up to their floor. And by the crowd, I mean the engineers, programmers, coders, uh, basically tech guys of many varieties uh, that are hub, uh, that are, you know, uh, on staff at a publisher like this. And it was really cool. I met someone who I actually needed to know later that day for a piece of paperwork I was uh, pushing through to get certain access to certain systems. It's really interesting to, uh, to see, uh, you know, official process in place uh, that's a little bit different than the priorities of an agency environment. Um, so I'm still getting used to that transition between sort of the day-to-day -day, uh, realities and presumptions of New York marketing agency with the day-to-day -day realities and presumptions of a in-house uh, job in the same field. And uh, I'm liking it. And uh, in particular, uh, I created a framework and everyone, you know, it has, well, frameworks are weird because they are a shortcut to doing work that maybe you really should be doing yourself in the first place. So people like to make their own frameworks so that the shortcut is also their own code. Python is so close to being various sorts of framework uh, that everyone's favorite sport is to crank out yet another one, be it a a web MVC or various other sort of uh, frameworks one may build uh, in Python just because it takes you you know so far of the way along and just that last high level abstraction level is what you sprinkle on top as a developer and then you essentially write config files initialization states whatever you want to call it that you plug into that and you have your own little sort of execution machine environment 
so that you can uh, create the sort of apps, websites, whatever that you like, the way you like. And uh, that's what I did with Pipulate. It's a generic way to run Python functions that are framework unaware, mind you, in a Google spreadsheet environment. Uh, and I've been through this a lot in the past, but I guess it's worth repeating. Functions, the name of functions, are in the first row in the location of column labels. And then the uh, rows each carry values that can be used as input parameters for those functions. Anywhere where there's a question mark found when the system is run, it will replace that by taking the input parameters off the row and feeding it into the function named at the top of the column and plug the output of the function into that intersecting cell, replacing the question mark. It sweeps left to right, top to bottom, and you have all the power of Python there uh, to do whatever you want. So it's a fairly uh, hmm, flexible, expandable, uh, great for ad hoc investigations and uh, doing all those things that SEOs often say they do or would like to do or could do as an experiment but never get around to it because there's no easy framework to plug this stuff into. Well, Pipulate is that mostly SEO but also social media, QA, spot checking things. Uh, it's a little bit shy of things like Selenium or anything that has an actual uh, headless browser built in, maybe with Mechanize or there's a couple others that I hear, one that's being used in Scrapey. Uh, so I might even incorporate that stuff in the future because all it is is another uh, library or module to include. It becomes a dependency if it's a common function that's used. But that's just the way Pipulate works. You want to support something new, you install the client libraries on one of the many disposable server nodes that you have around to, to run this stuff. So anyway, I'm at the door here, so I'll wrap up by saying I'm really pumped and I'm gonna be doing a lot of breathing life back into the Pipulate project uh, as my day-to-day -day work. What a pleasure. Thanks for joining me. Hope to see you again soon and don't forget to subscribe.